is attorney Paul Darinassian of Darinassian and Darinassian in Albany. He's here to talk about the massive backlog in testing kits for rape victims. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul has had an extensive background in this. He's written a book on the subject as well as prosecuted uh, cases of that type for 20 years. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. Good to be here, Dan. Well, uh, listen, first question, is this a big problem in the capital region and in, in, in New York State? Well, the Department of Justice estimated in 2011 that there were over 200,000 untested rape kits, and some cities like Detroit have 11 or 12,000 untested rape kits. It's not quite as bad in New York State. There's been some significant efforts here, but it's a problem throughout the entire country. All right, so let, let, let's talk about this. What What's causing this backlog? So yeah. explain the backlog, first of all. So there's a backlog in testing kits. Well, first of all, one of the benefits of encouraging people to report is that more rape kits have been performed. But what's happened is many times law enforcement agencies would say, maybe this is a case that we don't want to pursue. Or because of the cost of testing, kits would stay in perhaps police agencies, sometimes in the lab. So because of the increase in reports and the increase in cases, which is a good thing, we've had this backlog, and again, the cost has been a factor in some municipalities. So what are the ramifications? What yeah. can happen because now, of this? Ramifications are huge because obviously, if you don't get the information as to who the perpetrator is, the case doesn't get followed up. You don't make arrest. In short, criminals can go free. And nowadays, DNA is the key to so many types of criminal investigations. There's pre-DNA and post-DNA when it comes to criminal investigations. So that's one of the huge problems, but also connecting individuals. Even if a case isn't going to be prosecuted, if you have that information, it may help in another jurisdiction. And perhaps an earlier case which can't be prosecuted because we've missed the statute of limitations, that information could still be used in another case. I'm just going to ask a quick question here in between. Uh, why is this not widely known? Well, it's actually starting to get known, but it was one of those things that just seemed to crop up when people started connecting the dots. What's happening in one community and another community, it turned out there was a national problem. It just wasn't a local problem. Okay, so at this point, uh, you know, so you're saying that there are some testing kits that are just sitting at police mm -hmm. departments. Well, how do you fix this? Well, the first pr problem was to identify it, and that's been done. What's happened is the government has given some more resources, but believe it or not, private funding has been exceptionally important. There are private agencies and private uh, organizations that have committed money to helping solve this problem. So that was part of it. And also communities realizing and law enforcement agencies realizing that they should get this information, even though, again, they were reluctant because it meant now they had to follow up on cases also. And so at this point, uh, where we are right now in New York State, uh, is this being looked at? Is this being saw? Uh, you yeah, know, and New York is fortunate because, like, if you look at New York City that had about uh, maybe 17,000 untested rape kits, they made an effort to do something about it. And the result was they increased the arrest rate in New York City from 40 to 70 percent. And what they decided to do recently is take 35 million in crime forfeiture money and give it to communities that need to have the testing done focusing on New York State. And if you think about it, that's a great use of crime forfeiture money and it's having an impact. What about the victims themselves, Paul? So wh wh where do they stand in this? I mean, how do they take action or can they? Well, directly they can't. What they have to do is get involved in efforts to bring awareness not only to rape in general but this particular problem. They don't have an individual right. But I would always suggest that if a rape victim feels their case isn't being pursued, to contact both the police as well as the prosecutors to make sure their case is being pursued. This is not, this is not good. This is not good, but the good news is there is attention being given to it and progress is being made. All right. Paul Derhanesian from Derhanesian, Derhanesian in Albany. Paul, always a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. All right. More information on our website, WNYT.com.